ControlNet has been a reliable network solution for over two decades. It was created for mission critical applications where data had to move quickly and consistently between devices. As a media platform, it is highly immune to EMF noise. In general, ControlNet had excellent durability, reliability, and robustness. I'm John Johnson, an automation specialist with ESNE. In this video, we will discuss migrating from ControlNet to Ethernet IP. In February 2020, Rockwell announced ControlNet products will only be available for the next few years. Within Rockwell's lifecycle status program, ControlNet devices have moved from active to active mature. This means that many ControlNet products are fully supported, but a newer product or product family exists. Active mature status can also mean that the replacement product is typically less expensive and provides greater value. So knowing that ControlNet was and still is the foundation of many industrial control systems, how do we approach migrating to a newer, more capable infrastructure like Ethernet IP? Well, Rockwell Automation has published two documents that provide guidance on how to accomplish the migration. Links to both documents are in the description below. The first publication is ENET-WP003, titled Modernizing from ControlNet to Ethernet IP. Features like media, components, performance, and security are compared to illustrate the differences between the protocols. There is also a resources section that provides a comprehensive list of other publications to assist with this migration. After reading this, you will most likely see the advantages of Ethernet IP over ControlNet are pretty obvious. The second document is a reference manual for ControlNet to Ethernet IP migration, which is publication CNET-RM001. This is more of a nuts and bolts document on how to accomplish the migration. It starts by showing how existing control net topologies can be duplicated with Ethernet IP topologies. Then it shows a comprehensive list of products that use control net and what the replacement product would be with Ethernet IP. This includes controllers, remote I.O. racks, VFD, and HMIs. The last section of this publication shows an example of phased migration. In many situations, segments of the network, including control net devices, can be replaced while preserving the existing system. This is a big deal because a phased migration can have less financial and operational impact on the existing control system and network. The point is that the entire system does not have to be migrated at once. The last section also shows the steps to take during the migration process. Steps like acquiring and installing new infrastructure and replacing Ethernet IP hardware and media. Finally, section three of this document shows actual Studio 5000 IO tree modifications. Highly detailed to help move from ControlNet to Ethernet IP devices inside your controller program. If you have control net infrastructure at your facilities and are responsible for modernization efforts, here are some first steps to preparing for control net to Ethernet IP migration. Gather existing control net drawings. Assign a priority to what infrastructure and devices get replaced first. Decide if some or all of the work will be done internally or by contractors. Is there a benefit to using a different topology, like device level ring? Create a high-level phased migration plan if you can't afford to migrate the entire system at once. If you need help getting started with your ControlNet migration journey or would like more information, please don't hesitate to contact your local ESNE account manager or automation specialist.